Hello, beautiful listeners. We are here on 90.1 WRUV-FM with Alex, a.k.a. DJ Dalo. That's me. And Jordan, a.k.a. DJ Dirt Kid. And we are here with the band Spatula, and they got some music and some question or answers for us this <laughs> afternoon we have take the it away questions. we got the questions they might have questions for us it's going to go back and forth take it away guys
should have been free to roam the stone like the buffalo. All I see is fences and slaughterhouses. Wherever I go, I should have walked the earth and slept beneath the stars. But instead, I got a mortgage and a dozen different cars. They sold us a million cars for a billion borrowed dollars. So we can work away our debt like the dog in the car. Isn't that just feudalism with more stats? Isn't that primitive, minimal, simulated freedom? Speaking with the serpent in the garden of Eden. Primitive, definitive, a bird in the head. Lead the brainwash masses to the crime missile. That's right, primitive. They were never really asking the right questions Because the questions were just messages of adaptive characteristics That they were to provide a benefit But now we're just irrelevant to the fight or fight
Thank you guys. Nice job. Sounded really good. Um, for those of you guys just tuning in, you are listening to 90, 90.1 WRUV FM Burlington. We are here with Spatula, and that last song you heard was, correct me if, if I'm wrong, your most recent single. That's correct. All right, yeah. and that was called See the World. See right the before world. that was the last, the previous single, Primitive. And before that was a, a song off their self-titled album called Silk Road. Um, so I guess we'll just start out with, introductions get to know your names what instrument you're playing and where you're from if you want to start us off sure yeah um i'm seth i'm playing the electric guitar and uh vocals i'm jj vanicor i'm on the keyboards um yeah originally from new jersey i came up to vermont for uvm uh yeah i used to do a show at 4 a.m in the morning i did the graveyard shift <laughs> here way back in the day so this is a, a fun little blast from the past I'm Matt, I play drums, uh, yeah, I uh, grew up in Massachusetts and moved here for UVM as well. Alright, hey I'm Ian, I'm Ian, I'm a bass player, I grew up in the Chittenden area as well, and uh, yeah. I grew up in Franklin County actually, uh, Georgia, Vermont, which is kind of two states at once, which I like. How did you all meet then? How did we all meet? Um, it's a conglomeration, uh, but that's a really good question. Ian here is um, a bit of uh, a bosom buddy for me. We, we like to say we, we met before we were, were born. Our uh, mothers were friends and um, pregnant with us both at the same time. So we've uh, we actually, the very first bassist I've ever played with is still my bassist today. So um, how, did, how did you come into our lives, Matt Berry? <laughs> we had a very good friend. mutual friend who yeah, was a bit of a UVM legend in his own day, uh, named Davison Herbert. So shout out to him, and they can thank him at least for introducing me to Matt Berry among many other things. And then JJ, what's your story? Yeah, we uh, both of us went to UVM probably around the same time, but I didn't meet. Uh, I'm, I'm the latest member of the group into the band. Um, I did know Davison though, so we were probably like two ships. <laughs> Like we probably could have met like ten years ago and started this thing then, but um, but yeah, uh, uh, I did one of three out of the four of us are software engineers by trade, and I met Ian at work basically. So yeah, super fun story. Yeah, I didn't. Really, Davison's like the father of this band in a way. He's not in the band, of course. You've never heard of him before, but you have now. So awesome. When did you guys uh, graduate? Sorry, uh, 2011 for me. 2011. Same. And follow up, where did you guys live your first two years? Ooh, first two years. Uh, I was at oh, Mercy Hall. Uh, Mercy. Yeah, Trinity Campus. Yeah, I was in Patterson. Oh, Patterson was my second year, actually, if you were, if you were curious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, probably there at the same time. It's so funny. And so you guys went to UVM and you're still here. What, what has kept you here so far? Is it music or...? I mean, I just I just always loved it here yeah. since I left New Jersey. I, um, yeah, I just I love the area. Just haven't found any good reason to leave. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, um, it's the mountains. Yeah, something the about mountain. them. Something about them draws inspiration. You know. For sure. Yeah. Um, can I ask about the uh, band name? How did that uh, come together? Um, I think I cr I credit the invention to Matt Berry. Um, but the, the, the conversation, I think, began with a uh, comment Ian made. What did you say, Ian? What? Well, we were Jam Club, 802 Jam Club. We were the 802 Jam Club for a year <laughs> or so. Uh, we, were, we, we had a gig booked, which is when you need a band name for real. Yeah. And um, I, I was trying to go to Ian. Max so they can talk into it when we're doing interview oh. stuff. Sorry oh, nice. Good around. idea. Get, oh, it's on tables. Get Matt a nice. Let's get a bit of slack right. there. And Perfect. We're doing some technical work behind the scenes. I know, I should, I, should, I should continue my banter and not uh, <laughs> narrate the technical issues. But uh, Ian suggested he really likes bands that have just like a, a household object. Just a, something, something kind of normal that you could imbue with the sound of your music. And so I joked to him, I said, well, Ian, do you really want to be like the spatulas? <laughs> um, and Matt Berry 
rubbing his chin in my basement, just utters the word spatula. <laughs> and I look at him. And I, okay, that's it, that's the man. <laughs> It just worked out perfectly. Can you yep. spell that for our, our listeners? Too? I sure can. S P U T double O L A. That's S P U T O O L A. And you can find us on spatula.com, all your social medias, um, except for, you know, the fringe ones, <laughs> the mainstream ones. You know which ones I'm talking about. I do have to ask now have you ever played anything at all with spatulas then? Like oh involved. Gosh. How have we not done that? <laughs> <laughs> do, that. do you have one? Uh, I'll do it now. I left mine at home. Uh, How, far the, oh, How far is the kitchen? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, uh, I lived in Nashville for a little bit uh, of, of time, and they have a lot of novelty music stuff in Nashville, as you might imagine. So I have this spatula that's in the shape of an electric guitar. Okay. Kind so of I gotta bring that. Yeah, and definitely. Like I don't know, I don't know what I'd do with it. I guess I'd slap my strings or something. You like, could figure something out. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Do we want to do some some more music? Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Take it away. Right. This one's our own little theme song. Oh, yeah. So we have time with Casey. so much for tuning in to 90.1 FM Burlington, WRUV. This is a brief message to remind you, someone you know, or a dog you love, that might have teeth. Eating 
processed food causes plaque and tartar to build up around the teeth, behind the gums. By brushing daily, you can avoid nasty diseases like gingivitis that make your gums bleed. So, take time out of your day, enjoy the moment, grab your toothbrush, and brush them clean. You'll be proud of those pearly whites. And glad you did. This message brought to you by the Fresh Breath DJs here at WRUB. Say that was one of the smoothest transitions into and out of a PSA I've ever heard. That was amazing. And you somehow timed it to happen exactly at seven. I don't know how you did that, but um, it's nice. our little secret. <laughs> I'll never nice. tell. Professionals, you, you, magician right never reveals. Oh, <laughs> right. And yeah, just a reminder, as that PSA kind of might have hinted at, it is 7.02 p.m. You are tuned into WRUV FM Burlington at 90.1. And what was the name of that song again? We're currently calling that the Spatula theme. Okay. Gotcha. Um, although, I feel like at the end we need to be like chanting S-P-U-T-O-O-L-A. <laughs> you know, really sink in the spelling because... You got a search engine optimized these days, and that was actually part of the inspiration behind the name. And that's if you know if you actually called your band the Spatulas, mm -hmm. yeah, might be difficult to find you on the old Google God. Mm -hmm. uh, it worked for Spoon. Did it though? Did Did it? They, were they pre? -Google? I'm talking about them right now. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think they're pre-Google though. That that could be yeah. The other one that came to mind was Yes, which would. <laughs> That would be a tough one today, but in the, in the 70s, score. They made it work. They sure did. Um, so I just wanted to talk about uh, just See the World, which you just performed a little earlier. Thanks so a music that. video just uh, came out for that. Can you just tell us a little bit about how that came to be? Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, I want to shout out to my main man, Dan Matlack, who played tenor saxophone on uh, that version of the track. He did an awesome job. Um, he's a really valuable asset to the band. We've been um, playing with him for years. I, um, unfortunately, couldn't make it out tonight, but uh, um, shout out to Dan. And so, yeah, that was a um, project that we recorded um, with a, a local company, uh, Robot Dog Studio, who was awesome. Ryan Cohen 
did literally everything. We just showed up and plugged in our instruments. And so um, I was just blown away. Uh, I'm usually the nitpicky type, really like, oh, you know, can you, can you add a little high end to the hi hat on the, you know, verse chorus? He, he sent me his work and I was just like, it's perfect. It's not, no notes. Um, so that was really cool. Um, we recorded it on Church Street at a dance studio called Swan Dojo. Yep. Of course, they also do some DIY shows there, mm-hmm. which we, we may uh, do someday. Uh, for, for now, we just are recording music videos there. <laughs> um, and yeah, it, it all uh, came together pretty, pretty quickly. Um, it stretched us all a little bit. There's some uh, vocal harmonies in there that uh, we, we put a lot of work in. Um, I had to get out, put on my composer hat and, and write some uh, saxophone charts for, for uh, Dan, which is a little bit harder than even normally writing music because then you have to transpose it and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, there was a one uh, interesting detail that I was going to talk about, which is, I guess, maybe the theme of the song, like what it's about. Yeah. Um, and I think I wrote it before, the pandemic, but it seemed a really apt song for the pandemic because it was sort of a, um, a peon to staying home and uh, enjoying the place that you live. So I wrote it about friends who were actually like sort of selling their house and moving into an Airstream trailer to tour the world. And, you know, um, that, that seemed like a very attractive, idealized you know, lifestyle. Um, but it was, it's something I've always really resisted because I think it's really great to have a local community in a place where you set down roots right. and mm-hmm. trails through the forest that you know and uh, all sorts of things that come with living in one place for a long time and getting to know people. So I felt like that was a tale not told a lot in rock music about, you know, just settling down, right. building a home, you know? <laughs> That's kind of rock and roll in its own way, especially when... The whole world wants you to go, you know, see the world. So, um, yeah, that was that was the inspiration. Nice, nice. Um, I just wanted to back it up a little bit further than that. From two a few months ago, your primitive lyric video. Yeah. I watched it, and the side scrolling, kind of like progressive drawn art, is was very cool. How did that one come about? <laughs> who who designed that for you? What yeah, you guys? Um, that was an experiment with a, an yeah. artist on Fiverr. Which is a you know, freelancer network. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I worked with an artist who goes by Idiot Motion, um, and he did a fantastic job. Uh, I that was another thing where uh, one of the things I think I've learned actually building this band is you just can't do everything yourself. Right. And if I had to give one piece of advice to other bands out there, don't do like being a DIY band does not mean you have to do everything yourself. There are amazing artists out there who for reasonable budgets will like you know take your product and dress it up in a way package it up in a way like like a lyric video right that has a whole new dimension to your art and people can experience it all over again um so yeah i've really been getting into like how do we you know tech up the band get like cool mm, stuff cool uh, media that we can share and it's like you know, none of us are video editors in our own time so you got to go out and, and find people to help you with that Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it seems like you guys are heading in the right direction in that aspect. Thanks, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you want to start us with another song? Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Awesome. This one um, is called The Sound. I kind of wrote it about the, the Burlington music scene and um, my, my love for it, I guess. <laughs> Come on. 
All right, listeners, you're tuned into WRUV FM Burlington at 90.1, and this is Exposure with the band Spatula. Um, what was that last song? That was the sound. The sound. That was a really cool homage to the Burlington music music scene. You said, right? Yeah. Right. Um, kind of the uh, jam band vibe, um, which early on. Um, I, I think I resisted that sort of label as a bad word, as if that means you know a band who kind of gets up on stage and doesn't know how to play their instruments. Um, but uh, now it's something I've, I've sort of fully fully embraced. Uh, I mean, I, I love the the music culture and, and history there, and I have absolutely no reason to to forsake it. And I think it's I think it's a beautiful thing. This is it's a, a special connection we have uh, to the larger uh, world of music in our very small state, so, yeah. Oh, great. That's a great way to put that. Um, what is your experience with, like, the local scene? Like, maybe have you guys done live shows around here? And yeah. where? Yeah, we, um, we've done quite a few <laughs> local shows around here. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, our, our very first show, I'm really proud to say, it, was at um, Nectar's. That was mm-hmm. way back in 2017. Yeah. That was as a trio, right? Yeah, that was as just a trio. Um, and JJ joined the next year. Um, we, uh, yeah, we love, we really love doing outdoor gigs. So um, we do a, a set at Letty Park almost every year. Um, I live in Essex Junction, and um, there's a new venue there called the Double E. And uh, they put on some outdoor shows during the summer too. We love playing, playing those. Um, a lot of the venues, though, I'll just list them off. We love all you guys. Um, you know, or- Orlando's has always been amazing to us. Monkey House at Winooski, great venue. Everyone should go. Um, even Delhi One Two Six let us play there once, <laughs> and uh, Jake was really good about it. And uh, but uh, we're, we're a bit of a loud, obnoxious band for that particular <laughs> venue. Um, but it was worth it for the cocktails. And um, Red, Square. Red Square, yeah, Red, Red Square we played for the first time last year. Um, and that's an amazing experience. Uh, uh, everyone knows and loves Red Square and getting to play out on Church Street was a real treat. Uh, if, if anyone's listening and can, can hook this up. Whoa, side, sidebar's gone, man. RIP, yeah, it's no sidebar. <laughs> We played sidebar, but it doesn't exist anymore, so it doesn't matter. Rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> um, once, when I still got a uh, notch I needed to get in my belt, was Arts Riot. So mm-hmm. if anyone listening knows uh, how to book us at Arts Riot, we're, we're available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah. Do you, Do you guys have, have any uh, like future shows coming up? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I... Uh, um, uh, sort of the, the band manager role. Uh, I've taken a little bit of a hiatus. I uh, have the joy and gift of having a um, son in October last year, which has taken up a lot of my time, um, which I'm super grateful for. But it, it has put a, a little bit of uh, pressure on the brake pedal as far as booking big gigs uh, has come. Um, luckily, WRUV exposure is before my bedtime, so that works out really well. Um, I'm sure we'll get back to the late night gigs soon, but yeah, the, the answer is no. No gigs on the calendar yet, but understandable. Keep, keep an ear out. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll uh, emerge from the grave eventually. Good. Great. Well, we're glad to have you here. Do you guys want to perform some more songs? We definitely do. Great. Yeah. This next one is the last track off of our debut album. It's sort of the uh, dark side of uh, the celebration that was the sound. It, I wrote it. Um, about my uh, my college roommate who uh, uh, sadly passed away in 2016 um, with a substance abuse disorder, and so a lot of the things I wrote about in the album was sort of reconciling these these forces of um, you know yin and yang that play out in our lives. How things can be really good in some contexts, in some places, and really bad in other places, other contexts. So. Um, yeah, I wrote this as a little requiem for you, Aaron Beltzer, if you're listening out there in the airwaves.
must have waited far too long, too long. Cause on that misty morning, he laid his body down. Doesn't 
Just tuning in, you were listening to 90.1 WRUV FM Burlington. We were here with Spatula, and that last song was called Pale Blue Dot, correct? Yes. And right before that was Cast No Shadow, and to start off this uh, round of songs was Smoke and Steam. Um, and personally, I had a question about the, uh, the studio version of Smoke and Steam, because at the end, there's about a 30 to 45 second snippet of like some poetry and I was curious who was reciting that and why was it included yeah okay um that goes deep yeah um so first qu- first answer is that is um the voice of my my very good friend Brendan Graham Dempsey another UVM grad um I'll, I'll plug uh he um he um he wrote an epic poem in English um, probably the first one really since uh, John Milton wrote Paradise Lost. Uh, it's, 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 you know, 600 pages totally in, in blank verse. And uh, uh, I had the opportunity to hear him read it while he was still working on it. It's, it's now been, been finished, I think, for almost a decade. And uh, I'm showing my age, but yeah. yeah. Um, and he, he lived in this, uh, there's a, I wonder if it's still there, there's a kind of an artist house in the, the old North End, call, they call it Estesia. And he lived literally in um, the pantry of the kitchen there. It was like uh, you would open a small door in the kitchen where like a pantry would be, and that was Brendan's room. And he, he, he lived this whole lifestyle, and he, and he wrote this epic poem. Okay, so why did I include it in this, this song? So um, I went to hear him read part of his poem while he was... Uh, still working on it. He was reading it as, uh, doing little readings as, as he was working on it. And I surreptitiously, I recorded it with my cell phone, my cell phone, because I, I thought it was amazing to hear what he was working on. Um, and when it was done, I didn't read it because it was a huge book and it was poetry. <laughs> and then while I was recording this album, I sat down and I read his, his poem. It's called God. Um, and it was his way of reconciling, sort of like painting in full pictures, the, the death of God. So the, the first book, mankind ascends to the heavens and they, they kill God with like the weapons of war. You know, they hit him with atom bombs and stuff. 
<laughs> the second um, book is, is all about how, you know, this sort of meaning crisis that humanity experiences as they, they lose their meta-narratives. This is sort of the trough of dis dis postmodern disillusionment our society is now in, right? It's like, you know, what does it all mean? Why are we here? If, if, if it's not for some religious purpose, it's all relative, then kind of makes us wonder, like, what's all the suffering for? And then his, the third part of the book is how he re-envisions God for the, the new age. How do, how do we rediscover meaning and purpose in our life, you know, through uh, this, this tragedy of the death of God? So uh, <laughs> it probably doesn't seem very obvious how this story about, you know, sort of my coming into the jam scene and then reconciling my friend's death is necessarily exactly related, but... It was such this like gestalt of all these these things, and I it was a, a piece of work that I sort of wanted to aspire to in my own work, and so it just really influenced me. And I, I think it was kind of what, in my own way, I was trying to do with our debut album is like take my dark experiences of life for him, it was loss of religion for me, the death of my friend, and turn it into something beautiful and new, and overcome that tragedy, put meaning into it you know, resolve my own meaning crisis. Right. And so, for some reason, uh, I decided to bookend um, the uh, album. And it actually begins with his voices, too. And the, the first thing you hear in the album, um, uh, a track called Holy Ro Roller, which is my own version of losing, losing my religion, you hear uh, Brendan say, people of Earth, behold your God. And um, it's a scene in his poem where um, they have the... Uh, you know, bringing this sort of statue made of mud and it's going to be the new god and then the people are just like but this is just a statue made of mud this doesn't mean anything and so it's this it's the cycle of um you know sort of deifying certain ideas and meaning your life and then how those sort of have to die and become reborn in new ways so i don't know if that makes any sense at all but um that's sort of what was going through my head when i was writing the album and then uh, reading this amazing work by, by a friend and so, yeah, decided to include it. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's very, very yeah, good answer. Got to have you real quick. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that's what, that's what we like. That's what we like. Um, so we have about uh, five minutes left. Do you guys want to close us out with some uh, song or two? Yeah. Brass. This one's called Brass Tax. It's about, you know, getting the work done. Work, work a day. You know. Back. 
Thank you guys. Thank you guys. So, <laughs> so, 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 so Thank much. You. That song was called Brass Tax, yeah? That was called Brass Tax. All right, awesome. Well, fortunately, we are reaching the end of the show, but that was really awesome. Uh, anyone just tuning in, unfortunately. Uh, we are here with Spatula, uh, 91, uh, 90.1 WRUV FM Burlington. Uh, do you guys want to plug any music, uh, streaming sites, social media, etc.? Absolutely. You can always find us on spatula.com, S-P-U-T-O-O-L-A.com. Um, we are active on Facebook, Instagram, tip, tick, talk. Um, but uh, we like to really release uh, a, lot, a lot of new music videos on, on YouTube. And you can check out See the World, which was just released yesterday on our YouTube channel. That's just Spatula. All right. Sounds yeah. good. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and have a good, 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 good night.